Welcome to Vanindan Academy. In today's video, I will be teaching you understanding solar panels and how they work. Have you ever noticed crystals in some solar cells but not in others, or wondered exactly how solar panels turn sunlight into electricity? Let's explore. Solar panels generate power by converting light into electricity through the photovoltaic effect, which allows them to produce energy from both natural sunlight and artificial light. A quick demonstration involves connecting a small solar cell to a multimeter, then exposing it to light, where you'll see an immediate voltage reading. The more intense the light, the higher the electricity generated. Interestingly, the process can work in reverse. Connecting a solar cell to a power source causes it to emit infrared light. Although this light is invisible to our eyes, it becomes visible with a camera that has its infrared filter removed. The solar cell functions through photons or light particles, which knock electrons free from their positions when they hit the cell, leaving holes behind. The movement of these electrons and holes generates electricity. How Solar Cells Generate Power A typical solar cell has a thin silicon layer, which acts as a semiconductor. The silicon is arranged in layers. One layer, doped with boron, has a positive charge, while the other, doped with phosphorus, has a negative charge. These layers meet at a p-n junction where an electric field forms, crucial for creating the cell's electric current. An anti-reflective coating enhances light absorption, while a grid of fine metal wires on the surface gathers and directs free electrons that the sunlight liberates. Each solar cell produces about half a volt. Connecting multiple cells in series or parallel within a solar module raises the overall voltage and current, creating enough power for practical use. Modules are then sealed with EVA adhesive, glass, and a frame to protect them from the elements. Solar arrays and how we use them. Solar modules can be grouped into larger arrays to meet different power needs. For example, a module with 36 cells can produce about 18 volts, suitable for charging a 12-volt battery in an off-grid setup. Residential systems often use 60 or 72 cell modules, while larger commercial installations may employ even more cells to increase power output. Connecting cells in series raises the voltage, while connecting them in parallel boosts the current. The power from these arrays is then managed by a charge controller and inverter which converts the direct current from the solar modules into alternating current for home appliances. Storing solar energy and connecting to the grid. Since solar panels only generate power in light, batteries are often used to store energy for later. Charge controllers prevent overcharging and regulate current flow. In a grid-tied system, any excess energy can be fed into the electrical grid through an inverter, enabling you to sell surplus power back to the grid a practice known as net metering. More advanced systems use battery banks to store extra energy for times of need, like power outages. During these periods, batteries can power your home until they are recharged by sunlight the next day. Types of solar cells. Solar cells come in different forms, including crystalline and thin film types. Crystalline cells are either polycrystalline, which display visible silicon crystals, or monocrystalline, which are more efficient and uniformly structured, but are also more costly to produce. Thin film cells, often flexible, are used in applications like curved surfaces or portable electronics, but have lower efficiency. Polycrystalline cells, common in electronics and hobby projects with efficiency rates around 13 to 17 percent. Monocrystalline cells, more efficient, around 15 to 19 percent, but more expensive to manufacture. Thin film cells, flexible and ideal for certain uses, though their efficiency is only around 5 to 8 percent. How light creates electricity in silicon. When photons strike a solar cell, they can knock electrons out of their atoms, creating free-moving electron hole pairs. Silicon is an ideal material for this process, as it requires only 1.1 electron volts to free an electron, allowing it to utilize sunlight's energy effectively. However, some energy is lost as heat, while reflections and dust on the cell can further reduce efficiency. Each solar cell functions like a large flat diode. Sunlight energizes electrons, which are attracted to the holes, creating a current. As long as there's light, the cell generates a steady flow of DC electricity. By understanding how solar cells work, 
we gain a deeper appreciation of how clean, renewable energy can power everything from gadgets and homes to vast solar farms, providing a sustainable alternative to conventional power sources. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and leave your questions and comments down in the comments section.